Hello everyone, so welcome to my tutorial again. So in this tutorial I'm going to like show you in a very short way how to implement a squeeze net, uh, which is kind of like more modern day cont net and uh, like it has many advantages and uh, we'll get it through like we'll discuss a little more about uh, what a squeeze net is, what is the motivation behind the squeeze net. Uh, since this is kind of like new architecture, you guys might not be familiar with this. So uh, the internet is flooded with the tutorials for AlexNet, VGG16, or many other very much familiar nets, but not many tutorials for a squeeze net. So it came to my mind like, why don't I implement this in Python and show you guys and also discuss a little so that we can learn all together. So basically, like uh, the squeeze net, it has been proposed by uh, some of the very talented authors from DeepScale and University of California, Berkeley. So this is the name of the paper that they proposed this network in. Like this is squeeze net, Alexa's level accuracy uh, with 50 times fewer parameters and 0.5 megabyte model size. So, and uh, these are the talented authors of this paper. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm really much sorry, sorry, I missed the name of the Stanford. So the, the, the affiliated institutions are uh, DeepScale, UC Berkeley, and Stanford. So anyway, like uh, since uh, you guys might not be interested getting into details of this paper, so what I'll do is I, I will uh, summarize the contents of this paper for you and so that it's possible for you to understand everything and uh, after this, after talking a little much about like uh, a squeeze net, we'll implement a squeeze net in Python. So anyways, like uh, um, uh, much of the recent research on deep convolutional neural networks, they have focused on increasing accuracy on computer vision data sets. Uh, for a certain accuracy, there are typically many CNN architectures that can achieve similar level of accuracy. For example, um, for a certain model, maybe AlexNet and V16, they'll get over 80% accuracy level. So given equivalent accuracy, a CNN architecture, if we have with fewer parameters, it has several advantages. Uh, like, uh, for example, like mm, with the CNN architecture having fewer parameters, it is possible uh, possible for more uh, possible to uh, for possible to achieve more efficient distributed training uh, communication among servers is a limiting factor to the scalability of distributed CNN training uh, for distributed data parallel training communication overhead is directly proportional to the number of parameters in the model so small models they can be trained faster due to requiring requirements of less communication and also like uh, as we know like that uh, there are many cases where deep learning i mean the deep convolution neural networks are getting implemented but in real time hardware it's very difficult to embed them because of uh, the memory limitations of the current uh, uh, hardware that we're using so uh, if we have uh, like networks like squeezenet that takes that takes really less amount of memory so it is possible for us to uh, uh, have feasible fpga and embedded deployment FPGAs, for example, often have uh, less than 10 megabytes uh, of on-chip memory, and there is no off-chip memory or storage too. So, for inference, a sufficiently small model could be stored directly on the FPGA instead of being bottlenecked by memory bandwidth. So, while also it is possible for us uh, to stream video frames through the FPGA in real time. Further, uh, when deploying CNNs on application-specific integrated circuits, which are ASICs, uh, a sufficiently small model uh, could be stored directly on chip and smaller models may enable uh, ASICs to fit on a smaller die. As you can see, like there are many advantages of a smaller scene architectures. Keeping this in mind, the authors of SqueezeNet, uh, they have focused directly on the problem of identifying a scene architecture with fewer parameters, but that have similar kind of accuracy compared to a well-known model, for example, AlexNet. So uh, enough of the introduction. So I'm going to now talk about uh, the architecture of the squeeze net. So before going into that, we need to talk about a very important uh, uh, parameter that a very important uh, module, I would say, uh, uh, that authors have described in their paper uh, that is called the fire module. 
So the authors in their paper, they have defined five model uh, that comprises of a squeeze convolutional layer, uh, which has like one by one filters feeding into an expand layer that has a, a mix of one by one and three by three convolutional field filters. So the liberal use of one by one filters in fire modules is an application uh, that uh, they have described as a strategy in their paper. So like uh, a strategy for the microarchitecture. So they expose three tenable parameter, three tenable dimensions that is hyperparameters in a fire module. That is uh, S subscript of one by one, E subscript of uh, one by one, and E subscript of three by three. So in a fire module, S subscript of one by one is the number of the filters in the squeeze layer, and uh, E subscript of one by one is the number of one by one filters in the expand layer, and E subscript of three by three is the number of the three by three filters in the expand layer. So when we use fire modules, we set S subscript of one by one to be less than the summation of the E subscript of one by one plus E subscript of three by three. So the squeeze layer, it helps to limit the number of uh, like uh, the input channels to the three by three filters. Uh, I think uh, like it will get more clear if we see the examples in the paper of the authors that they have presented. So here you will see, as I have said, the here the squeeze one, the squeeze. Mm, convolutional layer and the expand convolutional layer, the one by one fil convolutional filters and one by one and three by three convolutional filters. So, and uh, like uh, also like this squeeze that it begins with a stain alone convolutional layer followed by eight fire modules and ending with the final conf layer. So it is necessary for us to gradually increase the number of filters per fire model from the beginning to the end of the network and uh, like a squeeze that it performs max pooling with a stride of two after la layers conv1, fire4, fire8 and conv10. So this can be seen in details here. So there are two other variants of the squeeze net here also but we are not uh, covering these two variants. We are just covering uh, this one. We, are, we will be covering uh, this implementation of the squeeze net. So and also like other details like uh, uh, the output activations from one by one and three by three filters have the same height and y. So the authors have added a one pixel border of zero padding in the input data to three by three filters of expand modules. And uh, they have used ReLU. I think we all are familiar with ReLU and uh, it is used to, to activations from squeeze and expand layers. They have also drop out with a ratio of 50% that is applied after the Fire 9 module. Here the fire, here's the fire nine model. They have used this dropout layer for that. And uh, uh, it was the design so choice of the authors uh, uh, to introduce a lack of fully connected layers in SqueezeNet, well, which is inspired by a paper from Lynn et al. Uh, that has been uh, published in 2003. The architecture is named as NIN. So uh, when they, in, in their implementation, uh, when they trained the SqueezeNet, they began with a training rate of a uh, learning rate of uh, 0 0.04 uh, and uh, linearly decreased the learning rate throughout the training. So if you are really interested about more details of this network, you can read the paper and also go to the uh, GitHub page of the DeepScale and see their implementation in CAFE framework. So I'm going to get into the implementation here. So uh, here you can see like, oh, okay. So before going into the source code, let us, let me show you the uh, data set I have for you guys. So here, like I have kept the data set in my Google Drive. And uh, like, uh, I know using the Google Drive can be really tedious because you need a good internet connection and it takes a lot of time to run the source scores and see the training results. But uh, what, well, the reason why I use Google Colab is like, if you're starting with Google Colab, it kind of like makes your life a little easier because you don't have to worry about the installation of many libraries and also like it's kind of difficult for the first timers uh, to get along with the uh, library and file management in your own hard machines. So it's better for you guys to use Google Colab if you're starting and then by the time you get introduced with libraries and how to man manage and manipulate them using PIP or uh, Conda, I think you can switch to that later on also. And also for like small data sets for as a starter, I don't think that like uh, it's really necessary for you guys to have hard machines. 
and uh, okay coming to our data set so our data set is like uh, uh, it has two classes one is negative and the positive ones like it's a concrete crack data set okay let's get into my drive so here's my drive uh, okay so like uh, okay I've kept this data in where like train and then in concrete data so the negative ones uh, the negative ones, like uh, these are the images of uh, concrete, uh, I mean the buildings, concrete buildings, where you can see that like these are the crack images uh, defining that uh, the building has like cracks. And also uh, I have got the positive images that have no cracks at all. So our task is to use uh, the squeeze net to classify these two kind of images. So one is the positive and one is the negative one. And uh, also, like uh, we have our validation data set also. So where is the validation data set? So here is the validation one. Negative and the positive one, you can see the similar kind of images there too. And let's get back to our code. So the first, we have some very uh, common libraries like matplotlib, numpy, and then os. We need numpy for error manipulation. We need os for directories and also the famous library tensorflow everyone knows about it so these are pretty much like very common and introductory libraries but very important so if you're kind of like not known or want to know in details what they do just go to the documentation of these libraries and see what they perform and how to work with them and next is our uh like after that we need to uh, uh, store the uh data directories into variables so for our training and validation and uh, other th after that, so we need some parameters, define, define parameters so that we can uh, load our training and validation dataset from the machine. So uh, if you're not introduced about to introduce to batch size, so not knowing like how this work or what it is. So the batch size, it defines the number of samples that will be propagated through the network. For example, let's say we have thousand training samples and uh, you want to set up a batch size equal to 100. So like the algorithm that takes the first 100 samples from first to 100 from this training data set and it trains the network. Next, it takes the second 100 samples from 101 to 200 and trains the network again. We can keep doing this procedure until we have propagated all samples through the network. So like there are some advantages of using a batch size, it requires less memory. Uh, since we train the network using fewer samples, the overall training procedure requires less memory. That's especially important if we are not able to feed the whole data set into a machine memory. So for example, while practicing or while learning, uh, we use really small data sets that, uh, that are like kind of, um, how can I say, like uh, compared to smaller than the industry data sets, it can become, I mean, in many cases, it, it is way too small than the industry data set. So while loading huge data sets, we might consider using batches because uh, that will take less memory and make our work, make our life quite a bit of easier. And is there any term that might seem unknown to you? I think this is the directory one for the training and then subset is training and seed. Uh, what is seed like? Uh, okay, the seed is a starting point for the sequence and it, uh, it guarantees that uh, if you start from the same seed you will get the same sequence of numbers that being said you also want to you might also want to test your experiments across different seed values okay so let's run our code and see okay so the directory ones and uh, okay so we have found like 200 2000 files belonging to two classes and uh, we have used uh, 0 0.2 as the validation split that is 20 percent and okay the class names the negative and positive as i told you and uh, okay so we are using auto tune here so you might get interested like uh what is uh, auto tune i mean what i'm what's going on here so like data.cache here like uh, i mean train ds for data data means the train ds that cache is kind of like it it keeps the images in a memory after they are loaded off disk during the first epoch this will ensure uh the that the data set does not become a bottleneck while training your model so if your data set is too large to fit in memory you can also use this method to create permanent on disk cache and also well, what else 
like uh, okay uh, prefetch uh, the data set dot prefetch it uh, it kind of overlaps data preprocessing and model execution while training so anyway so this is the part where we do the normalization of the data and uh, okay let's run this too let's run this also this might take a while so okay this is really um okay it's done and also these are like a very much pretty pretty much common libraries not all of them are used here also but uh, i've imported like uh, more more most common ones here i don't know which i'm going to need here with the upcoming ones so let's run it and this is the our squeeznet architecture the main part of it so i'm going to make your life easy. if you just copy this source code and run it i think you can you, you have you can get the results of the squeeznet implementation so easily so this is a kind of like a method that i've re written here uh, so there is a, also uh, this this is the squeeznet one it takes two parameters input classes and input shape and number of classes that you can see that will pass this parameter uh, in, in the next source code and this is the fire module the definition of the fire module all you can see the s and e that i have described here in the expand and uh, the squeezed expand and squeeze conv layers and here uh, pretty much simple and all the disk uh, so based on the model i have put all these values here that i have shown you in the paper and finally here i am passing the input shape here input shape and number of classes and uh, uh, like a model lot of models i'm calling the squeeze net uh, method from here then the model dot summary this is a summary of the model you can see the summary of the model finally i have used atom optimizer and a sparse category called cost entropy for our compiling our model and uh, okay so let's run our code okay done and then let's compile our model we don't want many parameters so we just accuracy and the epochs we will have we'll just see for 10 epochs and the model dot feed equal to train ds and validation data val ds okay fine so we are done we can run our model right now and see the output okay so this model is not tuned for getting very high accuracy this has been like a quarter with a standard procedure i'm pretty much sure that this is not going to get good amount of accuracy uh, maybe like 50% or 60%. So if we if we do some other steps like fine tuning the parameters and many other things, we can get really good accuracy out of this model too. So the goal is not that. The goal is to show you how to implement this Quiznet, which is kind of a modern day Comnet. Let's see. Run. Let's run it. So it's running. So we poke 110. Oh my gosh, the accuracy is like 0.52. So that's not our concern. So I think this is going to take a while uh, to finish all the zippers. This is kind of really slow. So, okay. I'm not going to wait till that when it finishes. So I think this is enough for you. You can just take the source code from here and run it in your machine to practice with the squeeze net. That's it from myself. Have a good day. Happy coding. Bye.